This picture here now, this was taken, judging by this, looking at this without the feed bunkers there and stuff, this was probably a, a year or two before I was born. This would have been in 1983, because 1982 is when we moved up here and I fed cattle and we had fence around the whole cattle lot then and had to drive into the cattle yard to feed them. So then in the summer of 83, we uh, south of the uh, barn there, we leveled it out and we poured cement and put fence line feed bunks on there so they could feed going downhill along the bunks and drive on the gravel and that, that was really nice. So this was taken in the summer of 83. And the silver building there with the open wall to the east, that is, that's the cattle hog building, that's where we're standing yep. right now. Yep. That building, for people who don't know, that building actually went down, we still had it in 2013, and that building collapsed in an ice storm in 2013. When, when you know, insurance covered to replace that building, and so this is what we went with. At the time, we didn't have uh, a building that was tall enough to get the bigger tractors in because the one to the north there, kind of in front of the old Chevy pickup there, would have been our second option, and that just wasn't. You, you couldn't get a big tractor in there. In, in that building, the one, the newer Morton Shed there, my grandfather built that in the summer of 1982 when he moved up here. I think he was helping, definitely trying to help us out. Yeah. And so he built that in, it should have been built a little bit bigger at the time, a um, little taller for sure. So it was a very nice building, but it just wasn't quite big enough. And especially in the early 80s, it was okay. We could get livestock equipment in there, which you really needed that inside in the winter. Uh, it wasn't heated or anything, but we kept stuff in there and we had a shop in there uh, at that time. And actually we could get the combine in there you could get the combines in there? Yeah. Yep, it's it was, a 12 foot sidewall, right? It, or 10? Well, 12 and a half and then it goes up in the middle. Okay. So you had, it but was you got to get through the door. Yeah. But yeah. I know one time we had to do a lot of work on the bean head after we hit a rock. And so we had the combine in there, uh, work through the night on the bean head in there. But, so it was tight to get it in there, but we could do it with a 20 foot head. So this is real close to what the farm looked like when I was, was younger. Um, you put the first bin up. First grain bin went up in 91? No, nope. no, 80. 1987. 87, the first okay. one, yep. yep. Okay. It, in 87, we quit cattle. 86 was the last fall that we bought cattle. So then in the summer of 87, we put the grain bin up. Uh, yeah, there were the two silos here, but we, when we fed cattle, we used to put wet corn in the one silo. But then when we didn't have cattle, we needed storage for the corn. So we put the first grain bin up in 1987. Mm -hmm. I believe it was. 91 or two when we built the second one mm -hmm. and then it was only a couple years after that we built the third one um, The first one was 20,000 bushel bin the next two were 30s and then I think it was several years before we built, built the first 60,000 bushel bin early 2000s early 2000s yeah. okay Which now we have four of those up right yep in the I last ended up between 15. probably 2001 or two when we did the first one and and then I did the third one in 2009 um, I believe it was 2010 because we put the 2009 corn in there. It was very light test weight corn and instead of selling it all we were able to put the corn in there and blend it off with some of the 2010 corn so we need more storage there and that one went up and now last year Zach built his first bin. Yep so yeah so the last one that was built is actually my bin. Right. be my first one. Yep and this is the second crop we've had in it now. Yes second crop in it did we even empty that one completely this year? I don't think we've ever run the sweep around on it. We yeah, got it down to the bottom, we but we didn't, didn't start the sweep, so yeah. that one has not ever been emptied yet. This picture here, now we're kind of jumping back. What year do you think this would have been? Because this would have been well before you came back up here, right? Yeah, this was, yep, before I came up here. The, the barn that's on there, now that burnt down in 1972, I believe. This, the steel pole shed that was sitting where this was, I know that was built in 1972. So I think the barn burnt down probably in the spring of 72, and then they built the, the steel pole shed here after that. Well, you can see a lot of the old buildings on this old picture that are still in the newer picture, painted up a little bit different maybe, but really the barn, the main barn where we're standing is really the, the main one. Well, and I guess the, uh, the shed that you and grandpa built in 81 or two there. 
Yeah, that yep, red that and white shed. Pretty much the only difference. So, um, yeah, so there's a second this picture probably in the mid '60s. Nothing really changed until the barn burnt down, and they built the one shed. If you look at this build, this this picture now that I'm holding up, there is not one building in this photo that still stands. There isn't now. Not no. one. There's a there's a concrete pad where this old little bin sits. There's only the one shed in this picture, the one that was built in 81 or 82, is the only building that's still here now today. Wow. So even just in 35, 40 years. Let's go back to this picture that's a little bit newer from when I was younger. You got the Massey Ferguson in the yard. I think that's cool. Yeah, talk a little bit more about this picture then. Okay, yeah, so you can see on the picture here, I can kind of go over what some of the things that have changed and when they changed over the years. Uh, as you said the first Morton Shed was built in 1982 and then I, I believe in 1983 probably this was in the summer of 83 when we poured the fence line bunk and then I believe it was the fall before that in 1982 if you look to the two silos the, the shed up there that used to be a corn crib when I moved here it was a corn crib and what we did we gutted the inside and we put steel on the outside to have it as a shed so this was a, a shed that we were able to use because nobody uh, picked ear corn anymore, we didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was originally for was storing ear corn in. So we converted it over to the shed. It also and held woodchucks. It, yep, it also was good for woodchucks. Which everything around here still seems to be good for woodchucks. But then that shed eventually came down in 87 and that's where we put the first bin. And at the same time we took the silos down uh, we knocked all that down. And then it was probably a couple of years after that, the greenery in the middle of the yard was no longer any good. I did put oats in there. You're the talking about that year. red, the red greenery. Red greenery in the center I, of the yard. In the center of the yard. Yep. The first year I farmed, I put oats in there. And of course, granaries like that were a real pain to <clears throat> empty. Everything had to be shoveled out by hand. Um, but. It was really in pretty tough shape. We put oats in there and oats are light, so it held the oats, but we couldn't put anything else in there. So then I believe in probably 88 or 9, we burnt that building down mm -hmm. and, and got rid of that and leveled that out. I remember, I don't remember that well, but I remember you were on the fire department, right? At right, that time. yep, I was on the fire department, so we got several of my friends and they were also on the fire department. We got the trucks out here and... And, and your it, friends had kids and we had a party. Yeah, yeah. yep. Yep, we lit the shed on fire and it went down about five times faster than we thought we would. Put a few bales of straw in there hoping that would be enough to get it started and, and it got started and within 10 to 15 minutes it was gone. So the wood was dry. The wood was very dry, yep. Well, the house went in 1998 when we put up the new house. We put the new house right in front of this one and then after, in 1999, then we tore the old house down after we were moved into the new one. Also where the... the Chicken coop is there. Yeah, so that would be the red, skinny, long red building on the um, to the right side of the photo behind the combine. Yeah, that came out probably in 2002. We took that down and built the cold storage building that's still here today. I remember just a quick story on that building. If you look on the on the end there, there's the two little doors, and we have we had a ladder that you could go in to get up. Sometimes there'd be a ladder that would lean against the side of that building. And I don't know how old I was, but I'm old enough to remember it well. Um, but I climbed that ladder and got into the very top there where there was some, some old straw up there. And it was pretty empty, but I thought it was a cool place to go up in, up in there and check out once in a while. Until you climb all the way in and there's a raccoon running along the wall towards you. And then you, you figure out how quick you can go down a ladder. I'm pretty sure his dad did not think that was a good place for him to be climbing at the time. <laughs> His dad did not know he was climbing up there or it would not have happened. <laughs> I'm sure the ladder has probably moved fairly soon after that. And then the galvanized building there that's open, that was here when you came back. Um, and you had cattle in there. That only had a 10 foot sidewall on it so we couldn't get much machinery in it ever but that still stood. Uh, spring of 13 is when it went down so we used it most of my life we were still using that building but you couldn't have much in it. You could, right, after, you could squeak the 6410 in it, you know, but it was... Did we have that in there with the cap? We had that in there. Okay. But the antenna would make awful noises going by the rafters. I mean, it was, 
I think we had about two inches of clearance between the roof on, in the between the rafters and the cab on the tractor. And most of the stuff we would pull, store the low equipment in there and we'd pull it in and out with the Minneapolis Moline. We used it a few times for, uh, we filled it with corn we, too. Yeah, there were several years after we quit the hogs, we took the cement uh, barriers that we had and we put them around the, the front of the building and then we would fill it full of corn. We'd get about 30,000 bushels of corn in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember doing that several times. And it, it, it was never fun to empty. It, it wasn't, but it wasn't really too bad. We'd put an auger on the one end and then we'd haul it with a loader to the auger and dump it on the auger, which would fill the truck. So yeah. It, it was slow going, but it really wasn't too bad, a little dusty. It was, it was a good use of the building at the time. It was, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, we used that building a lot for a little low building. Uh, and then when the snow took it down, well, we got a lot nicer building now after. Now we, yeah, I don't want to fill this with corn. No. So you started out, when you came up here, you started with the, the 640 acres that Grandpa owned at the time, right? Right, my grandfather owned 640 acres. Which you planted with and, the Moline for a few years? Well, actually just one year I planted it oh, with the Minneapolis one. Moline, the first year up here. Okay. An eight row mounted international planter. And it, it was quite a load for that tractor. Uh, and then the next year in an auction sale, I was able to buy an Oliver 1755 with a cab on it. And so we planted with that for the next two, three years, which was, was really, that was a nice rig. I like that rig. Yeah. We were able to plant with that and cultivate with it. Um, we still had the weight that did the tillage. And I don't remember the Oliver at all. I have no memory of that. So that must have been gone by the time I was three or four. I believe I traded that for the white, the second white 2135. Okay. The we red stripe one? Yeah, we got Because we had a red stripe. Red stripe, yeah. white 2135. So we had the two 2135 white tractors for a while. And after I did that, then the one that we had in the picture earlier, that is the one that would pull a planter. Mm -hmm. um, so then you started with the 640 acres. And yep. where did you go from there to build up to where we are now, which is we're at 2,400 acres now? Well, that's one other thing starting in the 80s. You know, there were a lot of people, it wasn't good for anybody, and there were a lot of people getting out, and so we were able to just kind of pick up land, rent land from some of the friends. Um, got the first quarter up here about two miles away, a friend of mine decided to quit farming, and, and he was going to do something else, so we rented his land, and, and it, it just kind of, several of the neighbors decided to quit farming, and they came and talked to me, and so we were able to rent land. It was, it was a lot easier to rent land in the late 80s than it has been any other time because there was a lot more land coming up for rent. Uh, some farmers couldn't pay their rent so then the landlords would get upset and go out and looking for new Someone farmers. Someone could pay their rent. Yeah and, yeah. and sometimes uh, it happened that one guy couldn't pay the rent over here and another one couldn't pay over there so landlords would get mad. Then they go out and find a new renter. Well, it'd be the same renters. They'd just swap farms because yep. it was kind of tough for everybody. Some tough feelings all around it, when, when it, it was. It, you can't pay the rent. Yeah, it it wasn't really any fun. Yeah, and it wasn't fun watching it, seeing it happen to you, and seeing all the neighbors going through that too. It was a, it was a long few years. Um, but, so it's just uh, kind of been. It's really over the years been piece at a time, a piece here, a piece there. You picked a fair amount up. You were talking about the late 80s, kind of into the mid 90s, right? Yeah, the, we picked up the biggest chunk. I believe it was 97 when we first ran in the land down by Starbucks and we picked up 800 acres. Which we're still farming chunk, today. Which, and we're still farming that today, yep. 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 And that it's kind of really got us going. Uh, we had a couple neighbors that retired before that, a couple years before that, so we picked up their land. And, and we ended up expanding a lot, actually, in the late 90s. And then we didn't expand very much for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And and now it's gotten to the point where some of the land hasn't cash flowed for us. So we've actually let some land go in the last three, four, five years. Um, kind of gotten to the point where we don't have to farm the land and, and if we're gonna lose money on it, we just decided we'll let it go. And, and I don't mind breaking even on land that we're renting. Right. But I'm not gonna end up losing 50 or $75 an acre just to say we're able to farm it. It's too much work and too much risk to, to do and give money up doing it. it. Too much risk, so, but I said I don't want to lose that 50 or $75 an acre. That's if we had a decent crop. Right. If you get a poor crop, you're gonna lose money on, on a lot of land. 
So you're mm -hmm. saying crop insurance doesn't just guarantee you to get rich every year? No. Oh. It, no. You know, we've given we've given some land up and we've taken some overall. We're down right now 300 acres from where <coughs> from where we were f 4 or 5 years ago. As far as me owning land, I've owned two pieces in my life. The first one was a 90 acre piece that I bought and I sold that to buy 133 acres that was better soil and closer to the farm. It's only a mile and a half east of here. So I did a trade. I would have loved to own both pieces and own over 200 acres, but it just, it wasn't an option. You know, pick one, pick one and go with it. And I, I felt like it was a good opportunity for me to jump on a better piece of land. So yeah, we're down a little bit on acreage just because we chose to be, I guess. Right, yep, and hopefully the opportunities will come along to right. expand again. Yeah, but, we'd love to have more acres, but like we talked about, we're going to make it, if, we want to see a cash flow. If it's not profitable, we're, we're not just going to take the acres to, to have the acres, yeah. 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 Where do you see the farm going from here? I've never actually asked you that. Well, <laughs> I, I suppose in about 20, 25 years, I'm probably going to be retiring. I'm 60 now. Sure. So by the time I'm in my upper 80s, I'm probably going to not be wanting to drive the tractors a full day anymore. <laughs> so hopefully my kids will be old enough at that point that they can kind of take over for him because in 25 years, I'll be 60. <laughs> I think we're already kind of seeing that gradually happen. Onyx is coming up into it. He's going to start doing more work. I've already kind of slowed down some. So I'm I'll never have to do later. anything. Yeah. Typical yeah. millennial. <laughs> no, I am gone a lot in the winter now, and so Zach's handling that. And so I've definitely slowed down. Now we're making the switch, kind of in the middle of the process of making the switch. Uh, we moved out of our house that we built in 1998 yep. last fall, and Zach and his family moved in there. And now this coming summer, we're going to build a house about 10 miles away from here. It's kind of, my wife works in two, three different spots. And it's kind of in the middle of where she works in our farm. It's a good location. So yep. And you have to go somewhere because I kicked you out. Right, yeah, we got kicked so. out of our farm. So right now we're homeless. I, it's like well, the 80s become, again. Yeah, this is, this is more comfortable than the 80s. <laughs> so. Before we finish this off, can you explain how the process went from where Grandpa owned the farm when you came up here, and at some point you had to, you know, gr Grandpa's... Grandpa and great grandpa are both gone now. So, at what point did you buy the land, or did, how did that work? Well, when I moved up here, I wanted to buy it right away, and I kept telling grandpa, I want to buy the farm. And he first he said, Well, you don't have enough money. And then, farm for two, three years, and I still wanted to buy it. And so, well, he didn't think now was the time to farm. And, like I talked about, we went through the 80s, and it was tough. And I think he could see that coming. I believe it, I don't remember if it was the 40s or 50s, he went through a tough time too and he went through the depression. So he saw that and I think he saw the kind of the crisis of the 80s coming and he probably knew that if buying the farm at the full price then I wouldn't be able to make it. Mm -hmm. So he just kept telling me well now is not the time and I wasn't ready. And then in 1992 my grandmother died and so my grandfather called me in and he said well said, I think it's time you buy the farm. So, of course, I would wanted to for all those years. And he said, I'm going to sell it to you on a contract for deed. And in 10 years, we'll have a balloon at the end. And at that time, my grandfather, he was born in 1900, so he followed the years. So he's 92 years old. At the time and, when he sold his farm. Yep, that's when he sold the farm. And he wanted to make sure I ended up with it. Yep. And then he passed away in 1997. And at that time, I'd gained enough equity from paying off on the contract for deed. So at that time, I was able to go out after my grandfather passed away and borrow the money to pay off the farm so I could pay off my aunt on the contract for deed. And the farm was still financed, but it, it was not any longer on a contract for deed. Mm -hmm. So it was with my local bank here. So you just didn't get the full term of that 10-year contract for deed with Grandpa. Right, and I believe he was 92 or 93 at the time he did it, and he thought 10 years... He, he, he had probably, probably figured, had an idea. Yep, the contract wasn't going to go to the end. So I was able to come up here, and grand, by that time, Grandpa had seen that I was able to run it, or at least he thought I was able to. I don't know if I could or not, but yeah. he figured I could. As well as anybody else, you had proven as much as anyone. 
You, you, right. know, you had proven yeah. that you wanted to, that's for sure. Yeah, you yeah. can certainly see that I had the desire to do it. Yeah. Right. And that's all I ever wanted to do. When I grew up on a farm, I, that's all I ever wanted to do was, was farm my whole life. And, and now I'm 60 years old and it looks like I might be able to. <laughs> all right, well, that's been a fun conversation. I don't know how many pieces we'll turn this into, but I don't know. I, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That's the history of our farm. I'm sure there's gonna be 100 questions. Yep. My guess is there will be a hundred questions and we can come back and do this again We, and do we a, actually could answer some of the questions answer some of the questions yep. So if you guys have questions go ahead and throw them down there and uh, we'll come back and I'll, I'll put some questions together and we'll get some answers So thank you. Thanks yep, for thank watching. You. Thanks for watching Well, that's it guys. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that blast from the past that interview with my dad I know I had a lot of fun doing it if you've got questions, I know some of you will. Again, like we said, go ahead and throw them down in the bottom there. And uh, we'll come back and do another thing like this. We'll do some interviews like this, try to hit some of the questions. So I hope you guys like that. Um, on a couple of side notes, we've got some, uh, some apparel back up on our website. So check out mnmillennialfarmer.com. We've got uh, our same apparel available on the site that was available right before Christmas. So you can now get that stuff. It is uh, not pre-order, so it's available right away, except for the hats. Those actually sold out right away. And we've got some new hats coming. Um, again, those are through Farm Focused. You can go to farmfocus.com and find them also. I've been working with Ben and the Evers family out of uh, Nebraska. They've done some great stuff for us. They've helped us out a lot. We sold a ton of apparel to you guys before Christmas. That went overwhelmingly well. And so what Farm Focused and the Millennial Farmer have decided to do was to set aside a good chunk of those profits and kind of set that aside. And what we're gonna do is donate to organizations that are uh, helping youth get into agriculture. Things like FFA, 4-H, stuff like that. What we did this last weekend was we actually donated $250 to uh, Tractor Supplies Company's Grants for Growing program, which uh, helps provide money and funding to, uh, to get FFA students involved in agriculture in different kind of ways. So they apply for this program and uh, Tractor Supply looks at that, FFA looks at that, and then there are winners that are decided to, to put together a program for the students to get themselves involved in agriculture. Again, Farm Focused and myself we donated $250 to that program. We've got more money that we plan to give away to organizations like this. And uh, we feel like getting the youth involved in agriculture is extremely important to us. And we wanted to give back uh, some of the profits that we made from that apparel. And so we found that to be something that's, that's important to us. And so look for that. We're gonna do more of that stuff as we go. So keep that in mind if you're interested in buying some of the apparel that a, a little bit of that is going to be going towards uh, things like that. The last thing I've got is for Dale. Dale, you've got a birthday coming up on the 28th of this month. I wanna say happy birthday to you. This is from your daughters, Katie and Carly. So happy birthday, Dale. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a fan.